This is Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com, and I'm really excited to talk to you today about a cool new program called Aurora HDR by MacFun and Trey Ratcliffe. Now, for now, this product is only available on the Mac, um, but it will eventually come to Windows, so hang in there, Windows fans. Um, I wanted to also point out that I'm using an um, older MacBook Pro uh, from 2010, uh, only 8 gigs of uh, memory and only 512 gigs of, uh, excuse me, megabytes of uh, graphics memory. So this isn't a super powerful machine. Um, I'm not using El Capitan simply just because I haven't upgraded and have no desire to upgrade. And that the images I'm going to be using today are full-size images. So you know, definitely not a super fast machine. Nothing's being done to make the performance super fast for the demo. Um, so I just wanted to be transparent about that. So let's come down here, and it's not running already. I'm going to, hook, you know, Photoshop is running, but I'm going to go ahead and start up Aurora HDR Pro. And I'm doing this because it's, you know, really pretty decent performing product, and so I've been really happy about that. Um, by default, um, it comes with sample images. This is um, the final uh, version, but it is a demo version, uh, just because I haven't got my product ID yet. Um, so this is the same as you'd get if you did a free trial. So you can load these sample images that come with the product and say create HDR. I'm just going to do the default, default right now. And just get past this, say launch demo. So it comes up pretty quickly and you'll see that it doesn't take a whole lot of time to merge the images. Um, but the tone mapping part, that's really the most time consuming part of the process. And so it comes up and I'm going to talk about the UI a little bit first. Um, for starters, if uh, you want to integrate with any products, um, you can come over here to the install plugins. Now this will just happen automatically the first time you run the product. It'll prompt you um, and you can do it after the fact. So like if you have this product before you install Adobe products, you can um, take this step. And you can it'll detect what's on the system and allow you to uh, install or uninstall them. Again, this will happen automatically the first time you run the product, um, so it's not something you have to do. Uh, but I just thought it was really great design that they did this where it can be run at any time and actually installed and uninstalled um, as you desire. Another cool thing is that over here on the right-hand side, there's a lot of powerful um, panels, but it can be kind of overwhelming to people who like things to be a little neat and organized. Um, I personally like mine like this, where things are opened, um, you know, all opened up. But uh, for those who don't like that, probably one thing you won't hear much about is that if I go under here to the view uh, menu, there's a single view mode. And that allows you to just see one at a time. And some people are going to find this much more satisfying because it's not quite so confusing um, having that. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to do it this way just to make things a little more clear. You can also use the uh, view toggle presets or the tab key. So I'm going to use the tab key here and it will uh, show you all the presets that uh, and it shows you real time you know what it's going to look like with uh, um, uh, your actual image that you're using. So um, I've started with the user presets. If you've done the pre-order these are the presets that you get for doing the pre-order. Um, but if you don't have that that's okay. Um, there's a lot of great ones that come with it. There's basic architecture, landscape, and so on. Um, one of the ones I think a lot of people will like are uh, trays uh, presets that come built in. So I'm going to just click on one like uh, Angels Within. And you see it's a little dark, um, but there's you know a whole bunch to choose from. Um, I'm a kind of a mouse clicker, so I tend to just drag like this, but uh, it's actually a little easier to use the touchpad sliding back and forth. Um, yeah, I wish this was like a Windows system where you could just touch it and scroll it. Um, but at any rate, if I uh, come back over here to user, I'm actually going to try out one of the ones that came uh, with the bundle called Vivacious. I uh, actually like that one. Uh, it's a really good starting point here. And you'll notice when I hover over these, there's a little star. Um, that allows me to uh, mark it as a favorite in case I want to uh, keep this one in mind. Um, there's so many presets that are built in that uh, that's kind of handy. So if I come in, um, you know, I can do things like create layers and so on, and I'll get into that later. Um, so let's actually um, 
talk a little bit about um, the main UI. So um, this is a trial version, so you, you know, there's not anything to open um, and export, but if you did want to export, you could create a file or you can send it to applications and uh, um, sites and stuff. And so uh, if you're a Mac Fun user, if you're probably familiar with how to transfer between products, so you don't have to go save the file and go find it in Finder and then go open it up. You can actually send the file uh, with all your edits directly over to the other products and uh, uh, transfer between them, so that's great. This functionality is de uh, disabled uh, for the demo, but if you buy the full product, it is available. There's your typical, um, you know, being able to view images at 100% and uh, fit to screen, and then, um, you know, typical zoom features. Um, if you want to see a before and after, so here's before, after and so this is basically turning off all the settings that are have been set here from one of your presets and just showing you what the basic HDR was like after it was done if you want to do a different kind of compare you can do this type here which will give you a real-time slider that's really smooth and allows you to show the impact another thing you can do is do side by side so this is pretty cool um, and I'm going to turn that off. And if you want to do undo, like if I come in here and I make some changes and I'm just randomly sliding bars, I can come in here and have multiple stages of undo to get back to the state that I was in from the very beginning. That's before my preset, after my preset. Oops, actually, after the second preset I clicked on. Okay, so next up, um, you have the ability to uh, crop your image. Um, so, you know, say you didn't like how this corner was doing here, we could go ahead and pull that in a little bit. And that's one advantage to being a standalone application. But as I mentioned, there is integration support um, with other products. So it is standalone, but it, uh, it does uh, play well with other products. Um, you can use the, so if I go into full size, oh, excuse me, 100%, um, I can click and drag. It's using uh, video hardware acceleration, so it's really fast. Um, I'll talk about brushes um, when we start talking about layers. And actually, let's just go ahead and do that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer. And I'm just going to call this another... Preset. So for this uh, second layer, I'm going to choose just another preset. And I can, if you look carefully here at this opacity, if I slide this little slider right here, it has an impact on the opacity. And so the cool thing is, is that you can decide how much you want of this effect right off the bat, or you can do it later just with the opacity. Uh, but that was kind of a nice built-in feature. You can mark it as a favorite. And uh, by default, this is a layer that is fully visible. Now, if I come in with the brush and I uh, look at this, that by default, it's going to be 50%. And I paint over the sky, what that's going to do is that's going to create a new layer that has a mask that black conceals and white reveals and it's actually showing up as gray because what's in the middle of black and white is gray and so you got 50 percent of the effect is showing that's usually a good starting point but some people may say you know i want this effect to come in right away rather than punch uh, uh, painting a bunch of times you can come in here do 100 percent and just get that whole effect in there just right away. And again, now you'll see it's white and black. Um, you know, rule of thumb a lot of times is people do between 33 and 50 percent and just kind of paint in um, and keep adding until they uh, have the right amount that they want. Um, but sometimes you know what you're doing and you want to crank that up. So just a, a little tip. Um, if you want to see the mask, uh, you can just push this little eye icon and you can see that it's a you know, solid mask with some feathering on the end. Um, 
You can clear out the mask. You can invert it. You can create luminosity masks. Um, copy the masks, all sorts of cool things you can do with it. Um, you can erase if you did too much. Like let's say I just want it over on the yellow side, not this other side over here. So I'm going to erase it from over in this side. And you'll see it's put some black in here. So I'm going to take it out of that part. What I'm going to do is uh, Aurora's still running. I just closed up from before. And I'm going to load my own images. So I have three images taken from Japan. And I'm going to, so you see I have um, my normal exposure, my dark, and my light exposure. And, you know, I can, let's go ahead and turn on alignment just so you can see ghost reduction. And I don't think there's any chromatic aberrations, but let's just go ahead and turn all three on and let's show you how long it takes. A half time, it uh, loaded up a HDR image um, of all three of those and um, looked pretty good actually right off the bat. But let's spend a little time playing around with it. Now, this hasn't been rehearsed. I'm going to do this just on the fly. And um, the primary reason for doing that is because I'm learning the product and I want to just uh, sort of experiment and show you what's there. Now, you can see up in the top here, it's showing that there's three exposures ranging from negative two to zero to positive two, three images. And uh, this is some basic information and that this is actually a big, big file that it's looking at. So. Uh, and it's created a 32-bit uh, image uh, of those combined. And so let's start with uh, tone mapping. So <laughs> by default, I, I found that you know I'm, I'm pretty happy with a lot of these. If you go through the presets, you can see some modifications. But one of the things I like to do when I have a new product is just experiment to see what these things do. Um, there's additional stuff I'll talk about on my website um, about uh, functionality that exists with the product. But I'm going to just... Um, uh, kind of show you what some of these things do because um, there's the, some of the descriptions that they've have in some of their videos really aren't that good. Uh, so sometimes just a uh, picture is worth a thousand words. So if I drag this spectrum all the way over, you'll see more detail came in uh, up here in the top. And then if I double click this, um, like Lightroom and um, other products, it resets back to zero. And you'll see how it got a little darker. And then if I pull this all the way over to the right, you see it got even darker. So you can see that it gets brighter as I go to the left and darker as I go to the right. Um, and I like to just do these things one at a time just to kind of see what's happening. So if I do uh, spotlighting, I noticed there was like a little change that happened uh, right here. So if I go back and forth, you can kind of see what happened there. And then I go all the way to the right. We kind of took off some of that. And then final touches. Go all the way left. You see it got a little darker over here. All the way to the right. It got a little brighter over there. So it's kind of brightened up the shadows. And so um, Trey will probably talk more in detail about what these things specifically do. Um, and you can always reset it. Um, just do that little button there. And so. Um, we'll come in here to Smart Tone, and we'll just crank that guy all the way up. And you see this really amps it all up, and a lot of nasty things start happening up here. Um, not really what we want. And if we turn it all the way down, we get a really nice dark image, but maybe a little too dark because part of HDR is being able to see some things that are lost in the shadows. Um, so let's reset that. And then... Um, you know, these are all pretty self-explanatory what the highlight, midtones, and shadows do. I wanted to try to spend a little time, you know, working on these. One of the ways, one of the many ways that I could do that would be that I would, you know, come turn these highlights down, and you'll see that I get a little more detail in those areas. Um, and while we're on that subject, let's just go ahead and uh, show you a cool little experiment. So let's go ahead and do a new layer, and we're gonna say dark. And for this one, one of the really, really cool features is I can come in here and say that for this layer, that the source image is either the previous layer, uh, texture, which is a file that I load, or I can pick which one of the frames that I want. And if you've ever done HDR, you know a lot of times you spend a lot of time going back over to Photoshop 
and bringing in those other frames. So it's a lot of tedious work. So this is all really nicely integrated in. So I'm going to take the dark frame, put that in there, and remember by default it's going to be 100%. So if I wanted to turn that, and you can see it actually applied it to all my presets. I'm going to hide that panel just so you don't I keep getting distracted by that. <laughs> and um, and you know this is all happening in real time, so that's why you keep seeing the refreshes. And so I could come in and you know I could adjust the opacity. That's not really what I want to do. What I really want to do is I said, uh, oops, excuse me, I didn't want to do that. Um, for this one here, what I want to do is I want to paint, and what I want to paint is just keep this little lamp here. Oops, went a little too far, but I'll fix that in a second. And this area here, because that dark exposure has it pretty close to the way that I want it. And you know, we know that we can come in here and erase it for that little shadow area I had. I can bring it back. I think that was a little sloppy right here as well. Now, sadly, one feature that's uh, painfully missing is that there is no um, auto edge detection brush like you would have if you turned on the auto feature in uh, Lightroom or on one. Um, really wish they had that, but unfortunately it's not there. Again, remember these effects are at 50%. Um, so if I said, you know, hey, I really I want to bring all of it from those images, then I'm going to come back here it's a little larger and paint it exactly the way it was from that frame and so that's kind of one of the cool things about HDR is uh, you know you have that other frame or this type of HDR editing software you have that other frame you can use to recover some of those uh, details that get lost let's actually come in here and do it to this guy as well so some of these others the smaller, we'll take some of the glow off of that, and I'll leave those back there. And this one here, well, we may or may not want to do it. It's kind of personal preference. And this one here, let me bring some of those details back. And if you had, you know, more brackets, you could uh, go for whichever one you wanted. Um, so this is really nice that you know you can do that without spending a lot of hassle, uh, especially you know if you're coming from Lightroom where you didn't have the luxury of being able to do layers. Uh, it's really a great benefit. So now um, that we have that, we want to go ahead and create another layer because this is all going to be cumulative. So more changes. I'm going to come over here, and we can start uh, playing with things like the clarity. see how this brings up more details. Uh, it's just like in, in Lightroom uh, if you ever use Clarity. Um, if I want to play with the uh, HDR look. I can crank it all the way up, get it really garish and nasty looking, or I can turn it all the way down just to get it turned off. Um, and by default it's around zero. Um, and if I apply this, then you get other thing you can do is you can just so make it softer or harder edged. And you can do some boost. See if I do this boost, it starts bringing uh, details out here, but at the expense of some noise. So this is one that I actually don't play with a whole lot, um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you. For this image, I think I'll you know probably throw in a little clarity, and then um, let's actually talk a little bit about uh, HDR detail again. If I pull that up, you'll start seeing a really kind of heavy duty effect. Starts doing some nasty things in the shadow areas um, and you can affect the softness of it. Again, I'm, I'm not really a big fan of that. I tend to like more photorealistic, so I'm going to turn that off. And then let's come on down here and actually just for a moment though, it's a good talking point. I'm going to add that nastiness back. Um, one built-in feature is noise reduction. So if I did decide I like this, like this effect, but I didn't like all the noise that it added, I could come in here and I'm just going to go radical and crank it all up to 100. And if I actually zoom in to 100%, you can see over here on the side that 
it did a uh, okay so it took a second for it to paint the effect back in um, it started getting rid of some of the noise I can smooth it out even more but I lose detail so it's going to create some softness so you know the built-in noise reduction is great um, you know for any layer if you want to sort of see uh, what it looks like with or without that effect I can um, turn it on and off I can say, okay, you know, did the noise reduction car cause more harm than good? You know, there's a lot of nice texture in here that I lose when I do the noise reduction. Um, and so sometimes I can make you uh, go back and revisit some of your prior uh, decisions. So I'm going to actually reset this back to off, and I'm going to reset this back here. And I'm going to go again, crank up clarity somewhere around the middle. Um, I want to see some texture. Uh, there's a lot of really good texture here. And then for noise reduction, I'm going to try to find you know, my happy place uh, for that. And again, wait a second for it to render. You see this little thing here, it's rendering. And then I'm going to try to get rid of some of this color noise that's happening here without ruining too much detail here. So whatever is the minimum I need to make that you know, at least somewhat decent. Uh, maybe smooth it just a little bit. Now I'm a big fan of uh, Noiseware's image, uh, excuse me, ImageNomics Noiseware uh, product, uh, but having this integrated uh, is definitely a big time saver and probably easier way to go for HDR. Uh, standalone I'd still probably use Noiseware, but um, this, is, this is a good solution. So next up is uh, image radiance. Now, let me go ahead and back off again. I have no idea, honestly, what this thing is, and I've watched the videos and I haven't really been convinced that um, we have a good explanation of it, but, you know, again, picture's worth a thousand words. Let's just turn this sucker all the way on. And what it does is kind of creates what I call like the tray effect. <laughs> you know, you tray Rad Radcliffe's images have the kind of like this, you know, rich tones and kind of smoothness to them that just looks really cool and stuff. And this one's just kind of taking it too far. So I'm going to back it off, but I like what's happening with that. So I'm going to kind of, you know, go a little more aggressive with it. And, um, you know, you can bring back the detail or you can make it even softer. And I'm going to go ahead and bring back a little bit of the detail. And... Again, you can adjust the brightness, kind of give you that you know, kind of bright glow effect, or turn it off. I'm not going to actually do anything with that, so I'll double click to reset that. And then there's this cool thing called Smart Colorize. And this is like, to me, it feels like let Trey uh, colorize your image for you. This is the area where I think where a lot of the struggles to kind of get um, really cool color effects. So as I amp that up, you start to see it kind of feels a lot like one of Trey's images. Um, now when I do that, the yellows kind of get out of control. So cool thing is, is I can come in here and adjust my warmth and maybe not have so much of it. Now I like some of that warmth, but just not too much of it. Um, so this is a really kind of cool feature. Um, now if you're more traditional, you want to do saturation and vibrance and contrast and so on, uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, I tend to avoid saturation unless I really need it, um, but you know, it's, it's there. Um, you can do some color contrast and so on. Kind of see how that uh, works. <clears throat> and I'm going to uh, not really do much there. I'll just add a little bit extra vibrance. Um, this is a fun image to have a little more saturated. Then for uh, details, um, now I want you to kind of just, let's, let's actually make this easier for you here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to, to this area here. I'm going to come into my highlights. And I'm going to try to... Um, get this under uh, a little more control too. So watch what happens uh, if I turn this all the way to the left. And then if I go all the way to the right. So to the right, you got, you know, a lot more detail came in. This thing, you know, gets less blown out. And if all the way to the left, it got brighter. So um, it stayed soft. And so this is a cool way for you know, some of your blown areas to bring details back. Another place where this had a, a positive impact was in this image here. Now, of course, we got to wait for it to catch up on uh, rendering. Again, this is a slow system, so if you have a fast system, it's going to be really quick. 
but I'm going to go ahead and just show you. Watch this area here. I'm going to turn this effect off, and then I'm going to turn it on. And you see these really detailed characters um, start coming in uh, a lot crisper. And so this is a really nice way to do um, really fine-tuned uh, adjustments. And so I'm going to come in and do the same thing here for the small details and watch what happens. So now these characters that were once lost are now back. And you know, you don't always want to do 100%, but it's a starting point and you can uh, adjust it. And this is going to have ramifications to your whole image, not just these areas that we want. So, you know, if it starts getting too jaggy like we're seeing here on this bigger character, you can dial it back. Um, but it's a, it's a really cool way uh, to try to bring back some details. And don't forget, you can always create a layer and just apply this to just the things you want. So if I wanted to just bring back these small characters, I could create a new layer, mask in just that stuff, and then you know, it has no impact on the rest of the image. So really pretty cool. And then it has some um, masking built in as well. So now we're going to do some glow. And glow just kind of gives you this um, kind of foggy kind of effect. I'm not a big fan of it, but you know those who like it, you know, it's really something you can do. And you can always um, you know, create another layer if you want and just uh, apply that effect. So I'm going to just reset that and not use it. Now top bottom lighting, this one's actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go out where you can see everything. And we're going to let our image catch up. Um, this is a slow machine, so it does take a few seconds. Um, I wish it wouldn't re-render every time like that, but um, at any rate, what we're going to do here is, um, right now there's no effect. Um, we can turn this you know, on and off and see there's nothing happening. But watch what happens if I go, let's actually do bottom so it's more pronounced. If I turn it all the way to the right, things get really bright on the street. But all the way to the left, it gets really dark on the street. And so um, essentially what I'm doing is a um, gradient uh, filter, neutral density filter um, on here to selectively uh, adjust part of the image. So a great way to see this in action is I'm going to crank this all the way out. You see it's real bright here, real dark up there. And then let's go ahead and play with the shift. You see it goes up and it goes down. You can actually see the, the tool when we do this. And we can rotate it. And so we're going to put that back to normal. And then you can also affect the blend, how much it blends. So you know, if you've used this uh, type of uh, control in Lightroom, uh, you're familiar with it. It's just, just a little nicer user interface for it that I find is a little more friendly. So let's go ahead and reset that one. And for this image, um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to darken it up a little bit on the street. And again, you can create new layers if you want to do a little bit to the top, a little bit to the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to point out that tone, tone curve and color filter are what you've probably seen already in other products. I'm not going to really talk about that. The next interesting one is called color toning. And this is very similar to what, um, if you've used color effects, they have a bicolor filter. So think of, a, instead of it being a gradient neutral density filter, um, it's one uh, two-colored filter. And so for this one, let's consider uh, this option where we have a kind of a bluish on the top and an orangish on the bottom. And so if I were to come zoom into this thing and look at this area right here, okay, let's let it render. Okay, so if I were to turn this effect, right now you see it's kind of yellow. If I turn this off, oops. And so it's subtle. Um, let's try a different color so you can kind of see this again. This time let's do it with green. You kind of see a totally different shade happen here. Turn this protection off so you can see it even more drastic. Turn it on and off. And so this allows you to um, kind of in a simple way um, colorize and you can choose the different colors for the uh, highlights and so on. So if you want to do your own colors, you can do that. So for this one here, I'm going to go ahead and reset it. We're going to take a look at Vignette. 
And so you're probably familiar with how this works. You know, we're just adding either a light or dark vignette, nothing special. So we'll just kind of move on there. And you know, of course you can place the center like other products. And then um, there's effects for the layer itself. So you know, with all the changes we've made on this layer, if we wanted to uh, adjust the opacity of those changes we made in camera or, or over you know, heavy handed and stuff, we could do that. Um, you know, just like before, you know, or other products, you know, you have different blending modes and, you know, you can choose what layer you're applying it on and so on. Um, so that's pretty much it. You know, there's a lot of really great stuff here, you know, to create a really powerful um, you know, image. You know, the layer support's really great. The support, you know, the fact that it supports luminosity mask is awesome. A lot of great presets. And, you know, we did quite a bit. You know, if you look at our, um, you know, before and after, we went from something pretty boring, which is what you typically get in your average HDR product, and turned it into something cool without making it too horribly garish and nasty. Um, you know, there's certainly, you know, if we wanted to bring details back in here, it'd be work that we would need to do. Uh, but in this particular image, it doesn't really add any value. Um, I like the results that I got, and I got it a lot faster than I got in Photoshop. And this video has been probably um, 30 minutes, me spending a lot of time explaining too. So if I work at my normal speed. I could have done this in maybe 10 minutes and, you know, uh, doing the same type of uh, editing in Photoshop, um, you know, the last time I did this particular image, uh, took me you know, a couple hours to get everything, you know, dialed in the way that I have it here. And so um, I was really satisfied with it. The user interface is really smooth, um, you know, fast. Um, there is a little bit of rendering things that happen from time to time, but this is a um, you know, pretty old system, so uh, the fact that it uh, it's doing this well uh, is, is impressive. So if you have one of the newer systems, you're really going to be pleased with the performance. It's a it's a, just a really great product. Um, super excited about it. Um, you know, really wish it was on Windows since I'm a, a primarily a Windows user, but um, I think people are going to love it. So I would strongly encourage you to check it out.